the cold slabs. Oh, the critics will say there's just no evidence for catastrophic plate tectonics, meters per second movement of the plates during the uh, time of the global flood. And yet you discuss, and I find it so fascinating, how scientists using seismic tomography, Dr. Clay, these, tomography. Yeah, these, these massive slabs of, of cooler rock, of dense oceanic crust, basically, from my understanding. Yeah, yeah the, lith the lithosphere, yeah. It's, it's about 100 kilometers thick, you know, 60 miles or so. It's the crust plus some of the upper mantle. But basically, we, we call it crust a lot. Just it's reasonable. To... So if catastrophic plate tectonics were true, as you were saying, this would be a, a, an expectation for us to find. Mm -hmm. And so is it correct to say that if these were taken there, through just normal snail pace movements of the plates, Dr. Clary, that they should actually be either assimilated temperature wise to the surrounding material or even completely melted? Yes. And and there is a little bit of melting that happens. You steam some of it off, and that's what makes those volcanoes that we see, these explosive volcanoes like Mount St. Helens and Mount Pinatubo all around the world. We see these explosive, you know subduction zone volcanoes but most of the slab continues to go down that's what the tomography is showing and if it really was moving at just a couple centimeters per year as i think i did the math one time it would take about 75 million years to go from the top of the mantle all the way down to the core where we're seeing these slabs kind of resting on top of the core and to do that of course at over 3,000 degrees uh celsius hotter you, you know they would have assimilated by now you wouldn't see the density difference and so what you're really imaging is a difference in density, the density being uh, faster. If it's more, if it's colder, you're going to get a different velocity of waves going through it. And so they related this back. The only thing they can really conceive this difference is, is by the temperature. And so they're always seeing these cold blobs, these cold slabs going down because density is, is explained essentially as the only way to get that density is to have colder slabs going down. So yes, the answer to your question is, they should have assimilated in 75 million years or you know 50 million years, whatever the case is. The only reason they're still cold is because they went down there quickly. You know, you put your hand in an oven with an oven mitt, even that oven mitt's gonna go out eventually. And right. so, you know, it's it's the same thing. You put something down into something that's three thousand degrees hotter, you it's gonna start cooking in you know millions of years of time. And so, so if they're see, arguing that that these slabs are basically being thrust down slowly over millions of years, over mm -hmm. 75 million years, mm -hmm. as you said, based on calculations, mm -hmm. how did they account for the density or the uh, temperature? Are, are they kind of uh, baffled they're, by this or are they yes. invoking rescue devices? Yes, it, it, yes. They, they tried to find out originally, they tried to say it's a phase change and you're changing phases, but then you would see a dramatic shift. It would be almost, a, you go down a little ways, all of a sudden it changed color because the density would dramatically shift to some other type of rock, but you don't see that. It just stays pretty much the same all the way down. And John Baumgartner has looked at this as well, and he says they, they don't have any other explanation other than temperature. Right. And so they really kind of dodge this. You know, they go around and around in circles. They, just like the original tissues of proteins they find in dinosaur bones, they're saying, well, we know they're still millions of years old. We just don't know how they were preserved that long. Whereas every empirical study in the laboratory tells you these dinosaur original tissues and proteins can't be millions of years old uh, because they decay away too quickly, even under you know ideal conditions. And so it's the same thing. They kind of dodge around it and never really address it. They'll take students out in the field like myself and they say, here's two layers of rock laying on top of each other. There's a hundred million years of time in between them. Isn't that cool? You can touch, you know, hundred million years of time missing in between. They don't ever say, well, why are these rocks so flat and parallel to each other with right. no evidence of erosion in between? You know, if there's a hundred million years of time, there should be huge canyons and gullies everywhere. The earth doesn't make flat layers, and that's what we see in Grand Canyon. But those flat layers are what we see across the continents with the oil wells. You can extend those all the way across the continent to continent to continent. It's it's a global phenomenon. The, the, you know, erosion doesn't make flat surfaces, but between every layer of rock, even there's supposed to be a lot of time missing between the sequences, you know, tens of millions of years or maybe even hundreds, where's the erosion? You know, occasionally you get some uplift, you get a few angular unconformities mixed in with the rocks are like this and the rocks on top are flatter. But for the most part, most of the continents are flat layers on flat layers, just like you see at Grand Canyon. And to explain that to me, is they don't address that either. They, there's so many obvious things that if we point them out, people go, yeah, but nobody brings it up when you're taking geology classes. I 
nine years of geology classes and they never bring that kind of stuff up at all. Wow. They just give you the standard story. Here's this, you know, feed you the same story, the same, same story, same story. It's like they don't want you to think. I want you to think, ask questions. You know, that's right. What it's all about. We don't have all the answers either. Like I say, we can't explain things that some of the things, you know, they're just part of the problem is there's not enough people that believe in the, you know, that God created everything 6,000 years ago, that there was a global flood 4,500 years ago or thereabouts. Uh, and so we don't have a lot of people that are looking and thinking things the way we are and doing doing the research. But uh, I just am so thankful to Jesus that I got the chance to do this. And this is to me, it's Amen. like every time I do a con, it's like a new Christmas present to yeah. see what. <laughs> so I'm, I'm waiting for Antarctica. I can't wait to see what the final results are on that once I got all the data in and me kind too. of open up that wow. present and, and see. And then I'll hopefully get carved in stone two out there uh, in the next year or two. Yeah, well, I can't can wait. Rest. I, I, I'm praying for your work, brother. I'm praying but for there, your work. There, yeah, thank you. There's other evidence, too. That, you know, I've got a rock over here I can grab real quick. I can find it. Mm, yeah, move some. I had a rock behind me that shows a lot of melted rock. I went to Alaska, and there's a place called Pasagshak Peninsula, Pasagshak Point on Kodiak Island, and there's an old subduction zone that happened during the flood year. The evolutionists would say, you know, an old subduction zone is no longer active. But they have rock there that's melt is this thick from these rocks sliding past each other. And and today, you know, we don't see hardly any melt when there's a big earthquake. You know, you might see just a, a millimeter or something of melt. But to get that much melt, you know, the, the evolutionary community says there had to be an extraordinary, just ridiculous amount of rapid movement that took place to make that much melt, to melt the rock from just the friction to get a, there's a couple of sequences. It's the thickest in the world they found so far. It's over almost a foot thick. And to get that much melt, they said that it's, they, don't, they don't even want to put a number on it. They just, it's just too much. Uh, and so to me, that's another evidence that there was runaway subduction going on. Because there was a subduction zone that's exposed today by later uplift. And you see the melt. You see the rocks that melted from the frictional heat. So now is there a seismic tomography showing that there's physical rocks at the surface where you get some exposed subduction zone that showed as well. And so his prediction that, you know, I, John Bumgarner didn't predict, oh, we're going to go find all this stuff. He just showed there's what the, the geophysics, here's what the models show. Right. And, and I don't think he had any idea that we're going to see this in the some of the surface geology. We're going to see this in the seismic tomography. You know, it's but it's a prediction that he could have and, and should have made, I guess, in some ways, predict that they're going to find some evidence to back it up. But, you know, it's kind of like me, just here's the data show. To me, the best way to explain it is a, is a global flood. And there's mm -hmm. plenty of evidence, plenty of evidence. I, it, it grinds me that these guys say there's no evidence. You know, We're standing just, on it, like you said. <laughs> yeah, most people are standing on it. It's like, mm -hmm. how do you explain that? Wow. And I think in light of what you're saying here, this is why it's so important to do what, what you've done with the geology textbook, if I remember correctly, at Liberty University, yeah. because you're showing yeah. both sides of the equation. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I don't know if that shows up backwards. Let's have a look at screen. that. It's backwards. Yeah, that's great. And but that's what we get... need is we need people because I know growing up before I got saved, I got mm -hmm. saved at around mm -hmm. 27, 28. Mm -hmm. I, I was unfamiliar. I was never presented in all those years of school, mm -hmm. high school, college any of this evidence and mm -hmm. so for you to have a textbook there where it shows both sides but then it highlights the evidence for young earth creation and a global genesis flood mm -hmm. that is fascinating to to most objective thinking people dr clary yeah as as some of the maps of my six continents where the data in there i mean it isn't the big thrust of that book but it's in the chapter on earth history so i talk about the evolutionary earth history story and then i get into okay here's what what we think the rocks represent you know the different stages of the flood and it's that that explains the the racks and the fossil record the best.